Our next speaker is the country manager of OPE. He will be sharing with us on the topic, OPE, our journey to scale. Prior to joining OPE, he served as managing director, Softworks Limited, where he led several multi-million dollar transformational projects, including the first public key infrastructure and two-factor authentication project in Nigeria. He spearheaded the establishment and incubation of Paycom Nigeria Limited, now OPE, before its acquisition by Opera Software. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Inyabasi Akman. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, and I'll just share a bit about our journey, our experience in scaling the um, OPE business in Nigeria, how we started, a bit of history. Um, a bit about Opera. Um, Opera is, um, is a technology company, as most people know. Um, and they haven't been on the sidelines, actually, um, just watching the digital space. Um, they've been taking specific action, especially to, to make a difference and to also make an impact in the digital world that we're in today. Um, Opera has over 5,000 um, entrepreneurs, engineers, developers, all around the world. Um, and I, it, it's quite an interesting thing to be part of that team that's, that's trying to make a difference globally. Um, a bit of the footprint about uh, Opera and what Opera is doing. Um, the Opera Mini is, a lot of people I'm sure are quite familiar with the Opera Mini. Um, today in Nigeria, the Opera Mini has 125 million active users, um, much bigger than Facebook. Um, and the, the second thing, Opera News was launched last year, and today um, Opera News is doing, has about 30 million um, daily active users um, um, who use the platform um, and are accessing the platform in Nigeria. Um, today, uh, OPE was launched uh, sometime in August uh, last year. OPE is doing over 5 billion in transactions um, daily right now in the country. How did this story begin? Um, Opera acquired a controlling stake in Paycom Nigeria Limited, um, a subsidiary of Telnet, um, a company that was incubated in Telnet. I incubated the company um, working with a team of people um, through an SPV um, known as OPE Digital Services. Um, and that deal was closed sometime in May um, 2018 last year. And we ultimately launched the OPE product in Nigeria in August 2018. So within a year, um, the, the span and the growth of the business has, I mean, the business has scaled quite um, rapidly. Um, and today, if we look at what is going on, we have quite a number of transactions that are happening on the platform. We've deployed a couple of products and solutions. One of them is OPOS. I mean, OPOS is relatively new. Um, it's the merchant-based uh, solution for payments, for enabling payments. Um, this was launched in September. Um, and today, um, as of September, at the end of September, we did over two million plus transactions just enabling that, that particular product. Um, all right, as many people know, I'm sure a lot of people got to know about OPE when they began to see the bikes on the street and we were wondering what's going on here. <laughs> and I mean, since we launched all right, in May um, 20, 2019, um, we've done over 10 plus million trips um, in Nigeria. Um, we also have um, another platform called OFood. Um, OFood has over 3,000 restaurants online right now on the, on the platform um, in, 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 in the solution that we've deployed. OWealth is another individual product, it's our investment product. Um, you can invest as little as 10 naira on that platform, um, just targeting the, the grassroots. And then also um, the OBUS, um, the transportation solution, one of the transportation solutions which we deployed for, for BUS. I mean, this product has been suspended temporarily, I mean, for a few reasons. We, need to, we, we are making some changes to the business model because one of the things we do as a company is that we we, we take risk, we are intuitive, we're spontaneous, and we try to engage the market, test things that we believe in, and where we find that there are changes that need to be made, we make those changes. Um, so, 
a bit about um, some of the things that we're doing. I mean, today we are creating huge opportunities um, in jobs and creating opportunities for financial inclusion and giving people financial access. Um, because financial access, we see that as one of the biggest challenges that people have, according to the reports that we, we've seen in Nigeria. I mean, a lot of people can't, um, can't better their lives because they don't have access to financial services. According to reports, more than 36% of, uh, of Nigerians are financially excluded, according to the FINA reports. So today in Lagos, we have 33,000 plus jobs um, within the space of one year. Um, 1,000 plus are direct employees and contractors. Um, we have over 2,000 riders in, in Lagos and over 30,000 agents in Lagos. Outside Lagos, we have over 100,000 plus agents um, and 15,000 riders and over 3,000 staff. And, and I'm sure that that's actually much, uh, these, these are figures dating back to September. I'm sure they're quite bigger right now because we're scaling rapidly. Um, so the, how, did we, how did we scale our business so rapidly? I mean, our growth has been phenomenal, I must say. Um, it's been quite impressive. Even I, I least expected that it would happen that way, but that's the reality. It shows that there's huge opportunities in Nigeria. How did we, how did we scale the business? So when we started, we did almost everything. We, P2P, um, B2B, we built the gateway, we tried the AGM business, we did a few things in remittances. But as things evolved, we began to see that we needed to find a path. We had to find a path um, to scale our business. And so what we did was we needed to streamline our sales focus. Streamline our sales focus to, to grow partnerships and then also um, get a captive network of agents because we felt the agent business was very critical to, to scaling our business. And why? I mean, today in Nigeria, we have just roughly about 18,000 ATMs. How many bank branches are there? Um, and, and even when the bank branches are there, I mean, they are, not, they are concentrated in cities that are developed. So you go to the rural areas, you wouldn't find, it's very difficult to find a bank that you could actually go to, to do your transaction. So we decided to focus on the agent business. And so when we took a look at the information that we had, um, based on all our trials, and, and it's very important to understand that it's about triage. I mean, you, you test things, you prove them. Um, and we found out that the agent business was doing better than everything else. Um, we had, we were doing, Roughly 300 million naira um, as at August, about 300 million naira um, in, in the agent business per, per month. And the, we had just roughly 63 active agents that were doing all of these volumes. The, pay, the, 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 gate, the gateway business was doing 20 million naira um, a month, in a whole month. And so we decided that, look, I mean, let's streamline this thing. And then we set some critical goals um, to focus on the agent business. So we set some goals um, that we needed to achieve 600, roughly 630 active agents by the end of the year. That was in August. Um, and then also, you know, achieve a target of 3 billion naira. I mean, that was the plan. But as we began to scale, we did a couple of things. How did we scale the agent business? We, 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 we had a couple of things that we did as a company. Um, we focused on building, using channels, growth channels like Facebook. Um, um, also analytics was very important to um, how we were gonna scale the business. We also used um, a very, very aggressive sales approach. Um, we're very, very practical in the things that we're doing, nothing too, um, complex. I mean, because we try to simplify what we were doing so that we, we don't run into um, a, a, an analysis, paralysis mode, what to do and what not to do. So, so we use these channels to grow the business. I mean, very few people knew that we were using Facebook to gather information. We get information from um, people who were interested in being agents. 
will organize events and go there and actually make presentations to the people and the sign up. Um, by the end of the year, we had scaled to 2,400 agents, um, and we were and we had hit a, um, a, a monthly a monthly transaction volume of 11 billion naira, which was 30 million dollars at the time. This was just by streamlining uh, focus um, to growing partnerships and also just focusing on narrowing our focus to a particular thing. So in, in, as of December 2018, we're doing $30 million. Um, and then we continue to focus on that effort until May, where we hit 40,000 agents. Um, and then we hit uh, $10 million a day. But that's not just the, the, the whole thing. The, the fact is that we realized that now that we had gained traction in the agent business, it was going to be the next phase. So we had to raise some capital to expand our business because we had reached the point where we felt um, we needed to now begin to focus on the consumer. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so in, in September, we hit 100,000 and by October, we had gained 66% share of the market volume. I mean, if you look at the mobile money um, reports from NIBS, you would see that the NIP, um, the NIP reports show that we, we had grown our business um, significantly and 66% of the, of the transaction numbers um, were coming from, from the OP platform. Um, total number of... Uh, of transactions on the, from, among all MMOs um, is about 6.2 million, but Pickham and OPE were doing about, uh, about 4.1 million of those transactions. I mean, so the scale was pretty significant. Um, and then in, if you look at the transaction volumes for NIP, 55, 55 billion of that um, was in October. Um, so 103 billion naira total, but the OPE business was generating about 51 billion of those transactions, roughly 50%. So how did we scale our consumer business? Um, and, and this is where we, we felt that it was very important for us to do something unconventional. Um, we hadn't done, nobody had done this. And so we focused on offering the market a super app. Um, and the super app, um, the launch of the super app coincided with the O-Ride launch. Um, and the O-Ride launch was a platform that enabled us to scale our consumer business pretty quickly. Um, everyone knows that if you look at the challenges we face in a city like Lagos, um, you will find out that, I mean, traffic is, is a nightmare. And so we felt there was a huge opportunity there, not just only because of the traffic, but people weren't able to make payments even I mean, even for the rides that they take. I mean, and I'm sure that everyone knows, even if you take a, a car ride, it's also difficult to make those payments. And so we had to focus on addressing that particular challenge of, of making payments. Um, and then what we did was not just focus on Lagos, because a lot of people think that uh, life only begins and ends in Lagos. It doesn't. Um, if, we, if you are going to drive financial inclusion, what people have not done is gone to the grassroots to actually deliver solutions to the grassroots. And that's what we did. We took all right within a month of launching Lagos, we took it to Ibadan. And I mean, the adoption was just crazy. Why? Because I mean, they'd never seen, um, they, no one had ever brought technology or innovation to Ibadan. I mean, imagine a city <laughs> where people aren't just used to using the phone to book a ride. And so we, we, we had to change that orientation. And we took it, and Ibadan took off within, within four weeks of launching Ibadan. We had more transactions coming from Ibadan than anywhere else, than even Lagos. Amazing. So what we did was we equipped the rider with the phone, with the helmet, with the training. We don't give them the bike, but we train them. And guess what? They're able to book a ride, they're able to, to take an order, and they're able to receive payments. That changed the landscape. It's very important for us to understand that the reason why financial inclusion has not happened is because we think, like I said, life begins and ends in Lagos. A lot of people are excluded. A lot of people are aspirational. They want something that radically changes their life. And I'm going to be sharing some of the testimonials here 
um, that were actually delivering financial inclusion and the benefits because that's the key to scaling if you want to play in the digital space today in Nigeria. Um, we need to do things in unconventional ways um, if we're going to make that, right, that kind of impact and scale pretty rapidly like we've done. Um, and so we had a clear plan on how we're going to go out to the northeast, to the south, south, to the southeast, and we're roughly in almost every city in Nigeria right now, almost every town or, or village, and we're scaling that plan. <laughs> All right, uh, and so these are some of the things that we've done. So I'd like to just share two videos with you just to show what we've done and how we've scaled our business, focusing on a couple of things. The July 7 inauguration open. Mude, Mutube, that's what you got to pay better leave at all. No, the inauguration open, the July 7. And I really thank God, let me know the Mutube for no one who pay, show pay. Along them, bad rabbi. At least, me, we motivate the open this. Motivate other, motivate other more than one thousand other. Me, other to motivate. And we do we do we follow. For all change the family, no change the life. Me, I want I want to make sure this one of the testimony about this and the Okada through open because since when I start this open, all team of get more for Okada, more Okada to to open no only. And if you look at you pay me. To the people who look at the room, you pay, you pay. You pay, I really thank God for that. Thank you. All right, and just, I, I, like to, I like us to go back just one step. I'd like to play another video, um, just sharing some of this. Uh, yes, thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Stella Osanapo. I'm an OP agent, pay home. So um, this is my location. This is where I do my business. This is Ojota Biode Park. I've been here for the past three months, and I've been with OP since um, March. I came across their page on Facebook, and I decided to give it a try. I applied, and um, they got back to me, and um, I got registered, and I started. The first week was okay so and i said wow i can actually make money from this platform and um when i first came here there was no money agent here and um the people around were so happy because um they had to go out to go and make their transfers they would have to leave their work to leave the park and go looking for a place to send money but when they heard that uh, a money agent is coming and they were happy and um Almost all of them now come to me for one transaction or the other and I help relieve their burden of having to leave their work. Some might just even call me to come to where they are and just send money. And I want to talk about OPE. OPE it's, it's a platform to be on and, the, and among all the MMOs that are running in Nigeria, OPE is a force to reckon with and it's, they have a lot to offer. The system is always smooth, faster running, and they're always fast to resolve issues when you have any monetary issue. So I've never recorded any loss so far, and it's just maybe once, and they put me through on how to recover my money, and I did that. To be honest with you, Ope has really changed my life. Ope is the best, the best money platform you can be on. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you know, so the, the the thing is that it, it's very important that we understand that. I mean, if financial inclusion is going to happen, there has to be participation of every segment. But at the same time, we need to go beyond Lagos because there's life elsewhere. <laughs> well, that we, we have a roadmap. So in 2018, uh, May Corporate closed the deal um, with Paycom. Um, and then launched OPE um, agent business in 2018. Um, and within 2018, by 2018 December, we validated that we are on the right path. Next slide, please. So, uh, and then subsequently in May, we launched the, the Super App um, with Oride and a couple of other products. 
and we finalized the deal for uh, the capital raise because we needed to sustain our expansion. Um, because the scale at which we were growing, we needed, we, needed, we needed money, we needed funds to be able to sustain that growth. Um, and then in September, we launched QR Merchant Payment uh, Solution, which is doing quite well today. Um, and then in October, we completed the deal for raising capital to sustain our growth, um, which was uh, completed. At, at Total was 120 million. Even I'm stuttering because it's a lot of money. <laughs> All right. And then in November, we launched the OCA. Um, and who knows what the next O will be? I'm sure a lot of people, I, I see it on Twitter, I see it on Facebook, I see everybody wants O air. They want to fly out of Nigeria. <laughs> That's not likely to happen. <laughs> All right. Um, so, just in summary, um, just to share the key takeaways from, from us and um, from me is that we, if, you want to, if you want to scale your business, it's very important that you find a path. There's a path for everyone. I mean, you just need to find the right path. And it has a lot to do with insight. It has a lot to do with the information that you have and your capacity as, 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 as a business to be able to scale. Um, do what you're passionate about. Build a simple plan, um, not a long-term plan. Because we, we, we focus too much on building long-term plans. Focus on the short-term plans if you want to scale your business. The short-term plans are more important um, for you. And be, make it simple. Be, have clear goals and be practical. Don't, we don't need to get too technical sometimes the way we do. Just be practical and be willing to take risks. Um, most importantly, implement the plan. Dedicate resources to them. And then track progresses. Uh, progress and continue to review that plan. Those are the key takeaways, um, and I'm sure that some of the other speakers have shared things that you, you, you can easily apply to your business, but I hope that this presentation has been useful, and um, we're hoping that we'll see more and more uh, digital platforms evolve in Nigeria, um, making that difference that, that we hope to see. Thank you very much.